Hello everybody, I'm Tom uh, and welcome to the first of what's going to be a series of videos on mirror dinghy repair and restoration. Uh, so I have here uh, hull 25067, little blue, um, and I've had this dinghy for uh, 23 years now. She's from 1971 built um, and has had quite a hard life in terms of lots of repairs and bodges, some from me as a teenager, some from the previous owners, uh, and it's time to sort those out now and rebuild her properly. Uh, I can't bear myself, I can't bear to throw boats away and let them rot, so this one's going to get taken care of well. Uh, I'm going to do a series of videos here, but I don't have great YouTubing skills or anything like that, so expect them to be a little bit rough and ready. But let me show you in this first video where we are and what we're dealing with in terms of the state of the hull. So basically what I've done is gone round, stripped a few patches, taken off quite a bit of the tape which was lifting. Um, this is, uh, as if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you know about stitch and glue plywood boat building, um, so I'm not going to explain all the basics, um, but basically what we have here is a situation where at some point in the past the main hull bottom panels have been replaced, um, the transom has been replaced, we have original sides and we have original panels and bulkheads insides, we have an original forward transom, original forward bottom panels and original top sides here. Uh, so let's talk about some of the bodges that have happened. Um, these bottom panels, the aft bottom panels, have both been replaced with a kind of plywood that doesn't actually match the front in thickness. They're slightly thicker. I think this is 6mm. Unfortunately, they have gone really quite rotten. I've got very soft wood throughout. I, this was me taking off the skeg and I just went straight through that, unexpectedly soft in there. And it was never really built properly in the first place. You can see the seams just never married up correctly. And that led to lots of problems. This is a common problem area for the mirror um, around the centerboard case uh, and down here. And what you, you can see is that was never taped in or made watertight correctly in there. And so water has just seeped into the plywood here. And there's this rotten patch around there kind of sounds not too bad but when you dig into the interior of the plywood it's just super soft. Now what I want to do with this dinghy is coastal sailing. I want to be able to do 30, 40, 50 miles along the coast in England um, and not have to worry about the hull caving in or things pulling out or putting a, uh, putting a foot through somewhere in a challenging wave. Um, so I need this to be solid. Um, you can see that actually whoever replaced this has just made a really bad job of attaching. This is the centerboard case in here. Um, this is my installation of a self baler that I've just removed. I've also been around and I've taken off the keel bands uh, and I've taken off the other hull fittings, uh, the, the eyes and the pintle and gudgeon. Here's a bodge that's my fault. This is the transom. Uh, when I was 15, we really just, we had no money. Um, nowadays, I wouldn't think twice of ordering some marine ply off the internet uh, and some proper epoxy, but we had no money, so I used a scrap piece of plywood uh, and whatever I could find in the local auto body repair shop. Uh, and so I've done a terrible job of the glassing uh, and this transom, although it's part sound, you can see it's been left out in the sun and rain uh, and that has just eaten away through there. Um, that's mostly actually sun damage, not water damage from just being stored in the sun there. So this transom needs to go. It's far too thin there now. That's not going to hold that properly. 
uh, and I've made several bodges in the past um, just to fare the new transom in on the corners I had rotten parts there um, this was not a bodge but it's looking a bit old now I scarfed a rotten piece of the gunnel there noticing also along here you can't see it too well in the video but I've got actually a lot of soft spots along this seam um, several places on the top side just on the edge of the seam so that's very worrying uh, and you can see from the texture of the hull here that there have been lots and lots of repairs in this area of the hull. Um, all this tape, it looks solid there, doesn't it? But it's not, you can peel it off with your fingers because everything is absolutely soaking wet and rotten in there. These have all been patches. Um, this dinghy has been slightly abused by the trailer and I'm gonna talk about that in a separate video, but like at least two areas of repair in this area have been caused by poor um, poor recovery onto a trailer. And I'll talk about more that more in a separate video. Where we are with the forward transom, we've got rotten patches around there and you can kind of hear that. Can you hear the kind of like like high tapping sound is where the the actual plies are delaminating in there further back here that's actually still sound plywood and a big problem is so it's been stored under a flat cover for about 10 years outside um, and i hadn't realized at all but um unfortunately i guess there must have been some condensation or something um, even though the flat cover was over here, kind of completely protecting it from water, I guess it must have been seeping under or seeping through or something. And the gunnels have become kind of quite rotten, especially in this corner, but also, also around here. And these, uh, I don't know what they're called, nose pieces, I guess. Um, I'll find out the right word for the next video. These are all gone as well, but they're easy to replace. A big concern is in here, along the top of the gunnel. Um, so water must have just been coming down. Um, and I've got this rotten patch underneath the gunnel in the actual top sides. That's not too bad further back, um, but it is a real worry at the front. And last thing on the hull is uh, this top side had had a rotten patch at the back end and you can see there I've just used a sliver of, of ply uh, and some microbubble epoxy filler um, this is back 15 years ago uh, 20 years ago when I was a teenager um, and so I've filled that in there but the repair's not looking great now that I've got the tape off of it uh, and it's time to do something a bit more rigorous. This top side also is showing kind of quite a few signs of rotting and delaminating and I'm just getting the sense that actually this is starting to become end of life for this plywood. It's marine ply, it's 50 years old, it's had a very good innings. Um, but realistically, if I'm going to trust this boat at sea, I think it needs to be reskinned, and that breaks my heart a little bit because, you know, when is a boat not a boat? Um, but I'm going to try and keep it alive as best I can. Um, at the original mahogany skeg, uh, it's going to be important to recover uh, a lot of pieces like this, as many pieces as I can like this, because you just can't get this anymore. This is uh, mahogany from the rainforests. Back in the 70s, nobody cared about the rainforests, and now, um, now very rightly, uh, we're much more careful about the source of our timber, but um, I kind of feel like where we've had timber from the rainforests in the past, that shouldn't be just thrown on a skip or burned. Um, that should be saved wherever possible. 
Got the original hull fittings here, I've taken them off. Um, biggest problem is with actually the keel band. Um, I'll show you the loop on the trailer. Uh, I'll take this bit of the keel band. It's been kind of worn into two. And what's happened, that's in this part of the trailer. That keel band, that's where the keel band sat um, on the trailer. And what's happened, that's rubbed at some point during a journey. It's not been mounted high enough on the trailer. So we need to do something about that. And I'm going to show you the restoration of this old snipe trailer in a later video. Uh, right, so... I think the conclusion for me is actually I'm going to need to do pretty much a complete reskin on this dinghy to keep it seaworthy and sound for the next 50 years. Um, and so I'll put a series of videos as I'm going through the process uh, to let you know how I'm getting on. Have a great day.